Hi, this is Tony Gondola from the New Mexico Museum of Space History in Alamogordo. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the next production in our virtual Rocketeer Academy series. Enjoy! The summer months are a wonderful time to explore the night sky. Because of the Earth's position on its orbit around the Sun, we are facing directly into the center of our home galaxy, the Milky Way, during the nighttime hours. This gives us a magnificent view of its brightest regions as it arcs across the summer sky. Our tour begins facing south in early August, about 10 p.m. The first thing you'll notice will be two bright objects close together low in the south-southeast. These are, from left to right, the planets Saturn and Jupiter. Even in the smallest of telescopes, you'll be able to see Saturn's wonderful rings and pick out Jupiter's four bright moons as they change position from night to night. Just to the right of Saturn and Jupiter, you'll see the distinctive teapot shape of the constellation Sagittarius, and if you keep going to the right, the unmistakable fishhook pattern that makes up the constellation Scorpius. The brightest star in Scorpius is the red giant Antares. This is our landmark for finding the two bright globular clusters M4 and M80. M4 is a vast ball of stars located 5,500 light years away from Earth. This may sound far away, and it is, yet M4 is the closest such object to us in space. Measuring 75 light years across, this cluster contains over 100,000 stars. Just a few degrees away from M4 lies another bright globular cluster, M80. The distance to this beautiful object is an astounding 32,600 light years. M80 is a very densely populated globular cluster with several hundred thousand stars packed into an area only 75 light years across. Moving directly east from M80, we come to one of the summer showcases, M8, or the Lagoon Nebula. This is a giant cloud of glowing hydrogen that's over a hundred light years across. The hydrogen is caused to glow by the intense ultraviolet light that's being emitted by the stars embedded in it. In some areas, the gas is being compressed into small dark globules, the birthplace of future stars and planets. Moving directly up from the lagoon, you will come to another bright emission nebula, M20, or the Trifid Nebula. In photographs, you can see the usual reddish-pink glow of hydrogen with an adjacent part that's glowing a vivid blue. This is caused by the light of nearby stars actually reflecting off the cold gases within the object. Over 5,000 light years away from Earth, this object is a delight in any telescope. A few degrees to the north of the Trifid, you'll pick up the showcase M16, known as the Eagle Nebula. Located 5,700 light years from us, it's interesting to contemplate that distance. Because of the speed of light, you're not seeing this object as it is now, but 5,700 years in the past. You're actually looking at the year 3500 BC. The Eagle is home to magnificent pillars of creation, a dense area of gas and dust, a hotbed of star formation. If you look directly overhead, you'll see the Summer Triangle, made up of the three bright stars Deneb, Altair, and Vega. Deneb marks the cross-shaped constellation of Cygnus the Swan and brings us to our next object, Beta Cygni, or the second brightest star in the constellation. Modest optical age will show that this is actually a double star. Located over 400 light years away from us, this double gives us a beautiful color contrast. This is due to temperature with the blue star burning much hotter than the yellow star. We will finish our summer sky tour with two very bright examples of a planetary nebula. The first is located just a few degrees to the east of Beta Cygni. This well-known planetary, M27, or the Dumbbell, the glowing gases you see are what remains of a star like the Sun after it's ended its life almost 10,000 years ago. It has gently puffed away all of its outer layers, leaving behind a slowly cooling white dwarf, all that remains of the original star. Our Sun will suffer a similar fate some 4.5 billion years from now. Our last object is found to the west of Beta Cygni in the constellation of Lyra. This is the glowing smoke ring that marks the site of another stellar death, M57. Some 2600 light years away, this small but bright planetary nebula glows with a ghostly green light that's very evident in medium-sized telescopes. 
That glow is caused by very low density oxygen gas that's being excited to glow by the super hot white dwarf star at its center. We've only shown a few highlights of what the balmy summer skies have to offer. There are many more objects that are worth exploring. Even casually sweeping through the areas around Scorpius and Sagittarius will reveal many other objects worth investigating as you look toward the very center of our home galaxy. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our latest production in our Virtual Rocketeer Academy. Be sure to check back at this location for new productions and updates. And for now, stay home, stay safe, stay curious.